everyone welcome to the always arsenal show i'm really excited i really am first of all we're not doing a post game show which is great second of all we've got the most amazing guest on tonight <laughs> no we have we really have i'm so excited look at my smile um the arsenal photographer mr stuart mcfarlane hello hi there's actually two of us there's david price as well who works yes, with me so i was gonna i was gonna ask, say- i'm gonna I'm going to ask you everything. Sorry. Yeah. Arsenal photographers, one of them. Yeah. But um, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank thank you so much for coming on. I've got so many questions and so many things to ask to start with. So, right, Stuart, were you a gooner to start with? I was. uh, My dad was a massive Chelsea fan. He took me to Chelsea a bit when I was younger. Obviously, it's a bad old days of football hooliganism and Chelsea at the time, obviously not now, there's was a lot of racism in football at the time. I didn't like mm. it. My uh, the, the best footballer in my street was a guy called Jonathan Fawcett, who was a massive Arsenal fan, ran around in a full Arsenal kit every day and I just adored him. <laughs> best looking, best footballer. So I started following Arsenal then. We used to sit in his bedroom and listen to the old LPs with the cup finals on. So Arsenal, and also because my mother was Irish and we had a load of Irish players at the time so I was attracted to them but I sort of dropped out of football a bit during my sort of school time and came back to it a bit later but yeah I mean it's in my heart now it's a club I love it's my life so uh, yes I'm a gooner. What a job you've got do you ever need an assistant I'm really good at taking pictures yeah, that's a question I get asked every day on every single social media uh, platform that I'm on and emails and letters. Uh, I'd love to have an assistant, but you know what? There's not much money in football at the moment. So uh, we're trying to save a bit of money so Mikel can save some play- some money for uh, players. <laughs> right, let's go back to the beginning. OK, so now we know you're an Arsenal fan. How did this come about? Well, I I studied photography because I couldn't really do anything else at school. And then I went to art school and then I was graphic designer for a year and I hated it. And I thought, what can I do? Go back to college and study photography. I thought it's a bit of a DOS. I don't want to work. I love to I love taking pictures. So I did a I did a sort of commercial photographic course at college and really sort of dropped out and wandered around London with a camera to taking pictures of people in the street. And then uh, my lecturer at the time saw a picture, uh, sorry, an advert for a black and white printer for a photo agency in Islington. Mm-hmm. So I went for the interview and it's for a sports agency called Colour Sport, who are based in just off Upper Street. Luckily enough, I got the job there. I mean, it was 1988, £6,000 a year, worked seven days a week. Plus two evenings, so a bit. That underpaid. wasn't bad, Stuart. I was on about four and a half thousand pound then. Yeah, I, I was remember. working seven. I was working seven days a week. Oh, but, no, I wasn't. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, I started covering Arsenal games for them. And then after the Anfield '89, they sacked their photographer, and they were looking for an agency to cover games for them. So they, because we were local, they asked Colour Sport to cover games, and I was part of that negotiation. Mm. So. I mean, I covered my first Arsenal game in 1988, Arsenal-Aston Villa. I think we lost 4-2. And then my first sort of commissioned uh, job for Arsenal was in the 89-90 season. And then and then as, as we moved on, I did more and more games. I was sort of doing 20, 30 games a season. And then in 2000, in 2000 they were looking for a staff photographer. So they just offered me the job and I started in Jan- January 30th, 2001 as, as a staffer. But everyone thought I was full time for 10 years before anyway. But, oh, that's uh, interesting. So you weren't at Anfield 89 as the photographer? No, I was. I worked for an agency. We applied for two passes and we only got one. I was due to go. We got we got knocked back quite late in the day. So it was, it was the only game of football I ever watched with my mother. 
who doesn't like football. So I was stuck at home watching it, jumping up and down. And she was just looking at me like I had, you know, like I was sort of a deranged uh, idiot. But yeah, that was that's probably my biggest biggest regret missing out on that one. I'm not allowed to mention it, Stuart, because I was there and everyone just takes the mickey out of me when I say it because it's obviously the best footballing night of my life. Oh, I'm um, sure. I don't remember seeing an Arsenal photographer. I actually don't remember much <laughs> after that goal no. in. I can tell you that. Um, okay, so first of all, welcome to everyone in the chat. And I can see you're going to ask questions, okay? Don't ask them yet because we're going to go through a bit with Stuart and then I'm going to come to you all when you can ask questions. Um, I can see one really good question, but let's jump in too far ahead. So, okay, I've got so many questions. I actually don't know where to start. I really don't. What, I want to know everything, Stuart. So if you started in 90, you've had George Graham, Bruce Riock, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stuart Houston, Bruce Riock, Benga, Emery, and Arteta. You've had six. <clears throat> yeah, it's a lot less than... My mates who work for Man United and Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, no, no. So, if they've uh, been there twenty years, absolutely. But it just it yeah. feels a lot. Um, and they've been all my managers as well. So, I mean, I'm not going to ask you who your favourite is. I wouldn't do that anyway for to you. But, but obviously, I know the differences as a fan. But what was the di main differences? How I how I perceive George Graham very strong, very disciplined. You know, takes no. You know. And we've got <coughs> Rioc that I don't feel was very respected by the players. Yeah. Um, then, then you've got Wenger who completely changed the club. Um, Emery, uh, you know, I supported him and until it wasn't, it was time for him to go. And now we've got Arteta. So have I sort of Arteta for me feels like in between a young George Graham and a young Wenger. It's funny you say that because I've said it to quite a few people at, at London Colney who've not been at the club that long. I've made massive sort of comparisons with uh, between Mikel and George in the way that George came in and cleared out what were sort of perceived as the sort of superstars who yeah. were a bit flash. And you could say the same with Mikel that he's and both of them have built young teams. But there's also a comparison that I also make between Mikel and and Arsene, and mm. you'll see it, and you'll see it in the next season, the season after, and the season after, in the, the way he wants to play football. You know, Mikel doesn't take any prisoners. You know, he's strong, uh, very disciplined. He wants, you know, he, you know, he wants honesty from his players and his staff, which is great. Which is the same as George as well. Uh, you know, I, I got on with all of them. You know, Unai was a lovely guy. I mean, unfortunately, maybe the language barrier was the biggest stumbling block for him. But Arsene was, you know, I loved Arsene. I was here, you know, I, I still love him. We had so many great times. It was a pleasure to to work with him and photograph him and spend time with him. And, you know, and he would, he would ask questions about me and my family, about photography. Yeah. He was interested, you know, he's gen, genuinely just a great, a great man. And I, and I see a lot of that in Mikel, honestly. But then I see a lot of George in Mikel. You know, hopefully we've got the right mix. But isn't that perfect? We need a bit of George and we need a bit of Wenger, don't absolutely, we? Absolutely, absolutely. And I wish that the people that weren't so impressed with Mikel could see this. I know everyone's entitled to their, you know, opinions, absolutely. I've always supported him since day one. Everyone knows that. And I just hope that, you know, for him and for us, that we do get top four because it's certainly going to help um, his status amongst fans that are not, you know, convinced by him. But yeah, it's it, look, it's not the be all and end all. You know, at the start of the season, everyone's going to say we, we were relegated. It would be brilliant if we could. Obviously, there's a few setbacks with injuries. Yeah. But I look, I've been around long enough to see it, it will be tough. The teams and the squad are good enough, but we've got we've got a coach, a, a manager who is right up there with the elite managers in world football. And I watch him coach and I listen to him talk to the players and it's incredible. You know, sometimes I forget to take pictures because I see, <laughs> I just want to listen to what he says and how he explains football. He makes it so simple. It's it's incredible. And, 
you know, it's given me a real sort of lease of new lease of life to my job because I'm thinking more about football now, whereas before I just got take some pictures, pictures, pictures. But now I just think, oh, he said that. I watch it during the game and think, oh, what he said was exactly what happened. It, it's incredible. That's, that is so lovely to hear. And obviously, from someone that's inside the club, you get to be with Mikel all the time. And it's it's so lovely to hear that he... And I, I'm assuming by looking at the team and the team spirit that they're fully behind him. I, th- I can only say from what I see, and I look at this, we've got a young group of players, and I look at the team spirit, and obviously it's, that's been worked on. We've had a lot of teams in the last 15 years. Mm. We've had issues with certain players or you know players haven't been loved by the fans so it's been tricky for them to play or they make mistakes and they get booed a little bit and but now I think the fans are with the team because it's a young team they're going to make mistakes obviously they're going to make mistakes but they're young players but there's no you know there's there's no it's not for want of trying and mm. I think that's what we've got to realize is this boy there's going to be sort of a few bumps in the road with these young players but uh I just can't see anything other than positivity in the future, honestly. And that's not speaking from an Arsenal PR head. That's me, honestly, as an Arsenal fan. It's just lovely. Stuart, I want to know, I want you to explain to us a typical match day. Home or away? Oh, let's do a home and then let's do away. It'd be interesting. So home is so three o'clock kickoff on a Saturday. That's pretty rare. Yeah. So I'll probably get in at but maybe six hours before kickoff. Uh, five or six hours, I will <coughs> go through our request for what we need to shoot on the day, and then I will make sure my gear is all sorted. I'll go to the photographer's room, make sure the bibs for the visiting photographers are there, make sure it's all all the chairs in the right place, all, all sorts. It's just mundane stuff like that. Walk around, have a walk around the pits, make sure all the areas are clean, all the all the working areas are marked. And then maybe I'll when the when the uh, ground staff mark the pitch out, I'll start, start taking my first pictures, either from pitch level or from up in the stands. So we've got a few early shots for our social media people. And then there's a sort of a bit of a lull until the kit men arrive. Then I'll sh- then I'll shoot them putting stuff up in the shirts in the dressing room, all those sort of things. And then we'll we'll have various sort of commercial jobs during the day. We might have some. This is before COVID, but we might have some corporate, like some ex-players speaking in club level. So we go and shoot a bit of that. And then really from 1.30 onwards, we're, we're quite stacked because it's team arrivals. So you've got to edit and send. Teams walking into the dressing room. Before COVID, obviously, we had mascots. So we had to deal with mascots. <clears throat> and all that time during the... during, So we'd shoot something, edit and send get it out to our partners and our social media team. And then once the game starts, it's, that's a simple bit, the 45 minutes and then the break and then the 45 minutes is the easiest stuff. But we would send to the social media teams if anything happens during the first half. You know, we if anyone sees me, I'll be, if, something, if we score a goal, I'll be just madly tapping on my laptop, misspelling players' names and sending <laughs> and then So where do, are you, where do you sit then? So David and I sit, I sit on the uh, west side and David sits on the east side. Right. And we generally do Arsenal attack unless we need to get a player who's making his debut or, you know, Aaron Ramsdale's caused us so many issues because he's all over the place and it's like one of us needs to go up there and photographing just in case we scores and he goes mental. So <laughs> it's quite uh, he's he's a challenge to us and I've told him. Uh, but we will generally do Arsenal attack. But if we need to get certain players, we'll move around a little bit. So, second, obviously, if we don't change, then we'll, we'll be North Bank in the first half. Sorry, clock end in the first half, North Bank in the second half. Uh, and that's really sorry, that's really, you're not you're not like on the pitch or anything taking photos. No, no, no. We go out, we go out pre match to do the coin toss and stuff. But once a game starts, I can't, I can't go on the pitch. You know, I might end up smashing one in the top corner. So <laughs> no, sorry, I mean on the edge of the pitch because yeah, you we're on the to... yeah, no, we're on the edge. We're oh, you are by, by, okay. So, I, so I've so yeah, we sit behind the boards or in front of the boards, so we pitch level. Fine. When you said laptop, I thought it was in the stands, and I thought oh, no, 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 we have it, we side. have it, we have our laptops with us. So oh. if something happens, 
you take the memory card out, stick it in the laptop and try and edit and send it to uh, our social media guys. OK, so obviously when we were um, late 80s, early 90s, we didn't have social media. So no. how has it changed so dramatically? I mean, you'll post a picture and it goes viral. How does it yeah. make you feel when you see one of your pictures all over social media? It could be in the newspapers, everywhere. It's it's weird because when when I first wanted to be a photographer, I went mm -hmm. for a careers evening at my secondary school at the time, and they brought a photographer in to advise us. And he just laughed and said, "Photography is dead. You never you'll never get a job as a photographer." My dad was a policeman at the time man and my, and my mum says you'd have to be a policeman like your dad or work in a bank and I was adamant I was like, I don't want to do that I'll, I'll be a photographer I'll be a photographer and photography sort of gone up and down really and it sort of when I came into Arsenal we just provided images for arsenal.com and for the match day program in the magazine but it was it was dying out a little bit but the moment social media mm. arrived and then there was so much value in what we you know, it was like the sort of second coming, really. There's so much value in what we did, and 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 now as well. And I think it's been it's given people at the club a bit of a kick up the backside to realise what we produce is actually some really good stuff. And it's, you know, and historically, when I, when I first came in, I just wanted to build up a historical archive of images that in a hundred years' time people would look back and they'd say, "Who took that picture? Oh, Stuart McFarlane or David Price? Oh, what a great picture!" And that, I just wanted to build up a his, historical library for the Arsenal fans to look yeah. back, and we, you know we're recording history here. So that's that's that, and it's great to see pictures in the newspapers and pictures in magazines and stuff. But ultimately, I'm recording. David and I are recording the history of the football club. Yeah. Oh God, you are, and and I love your pictures. And we've got a few to go through in a minute. Uh, there was there's just a couple of other things that I want to ask, and then we'll start on the photos. So. When a transfer is announced, how how much time beforehand do you know about it? It, it will it will depend really on uh, each transfer is very different. Sometimes you might get a week's heads up. Oh, Some, okay. Sometimes you <clears throat> sometimes you might get twenty four hours. Generally, you get I think twelve hours is probably the absolute minimum you get because our video guys have got to create a concept as well so my stuff's easy um, let's just get a camera take a picture mm. you know they've got there's lots of other stuff they need to do but you you, you get i'm quite lucky because i've got a, i've got some good contacts within the club so i probably get the heads up before a lot of people but you you know they need us to be ready and to and to go so the communication is is pretty slick but it, it, also, it all depends on obviously medicals and stuff like that. And when players can fly in, if they're from a, if they're from abroad, you know, like we flew, when Mesut signed, we flew to Germany, and he came out of the uh, national team hotel to to come to a separate hotel where we were set up in a hotel room with all our lights and stuff. But you know, it's not. It, it, there's no set way. You know, it, it, every single transfer is completely different. Wow. That's so, you know, it's fascinating that you know. How do you keep quiet? <laughs> uh, I think you just do. Uh, do you know? I learned after Go Sol Cam after Sol Campbell's. That was that was like, I just I just wanted another one of those, another one of those moments again. You know, another walk in walk behind Sol into a room full of journalists who are completely clueless, and I would love that moment again. So it's easy for me not to say anything. Because I'd love, I'd love it to be everything to be completely quiet, and then just a big shock on these on these people's faces. Well, Sol Campbell was Mesut Özil was really. There was no, there was no hint about that. No. Um, I think the way Arsenal do stuff is social media go mental over transfers. I don't discuss transfers until it's announced on Sky Sports, or my dad tells me we've signed someone because I just don't believe. Three quarters of the amount that goes on, and we've lost this one, and we've lost that one. And there's probably loads of transfers we have no idea about that you know came really close and just didn't happen. So that is yeah, going to be. Do you know what, Amanda? I'm not sure if that's really. You know, I've been I've been around here long enough to know who we're in for that are close. 
but so much of the stuff you read in the papers and see online is utter, utter mm. rubbish. And it's just basically either journalists or it's people who think they've got contacts inside the club who are, who are just, and it's clickbait, isn't it? It's rubbish. And they're just trying to generate a bit of self-interest. So, you know, I don't ever pay any attention. And yeah. I, I tell my mates the same as well. And they're always on, on my case, blah, 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 you know, whoever. So said, just don't believe what you read on Twitter. What, yeah, why would you? Do you believe you read stuff you read, you read in the newspapers? Do you know what, Stuart? You and I are on the same page because over the years, all the podcasts I've done, I refuse to do transfer rumour shows. I'm not interested. Until they've signed, then I'll talk yeah. about them. You know, yeah. absolutely not. But one of uh, the shows, David Ziegler said, maybe we can pull off a Harland or an Mbappe this summer and shock everybody. That's quite... Uh, Dreaming, dreaming, well, David. Well, you never know, Martin. Martin might handcuff him on international duty and <laughs> drag him back. So, uh, no, look, we, we'd all we'd all love a, you know, we'd all love a, a great centre forward. But I've got complete faith in Mikel and and they do and and the uh, and the uh, scouts to pick the right player for the club. You know, for the next few years. Okay, I've got so many things. Well, so let's. Uh, you might have mentioned it, but what transfer shocked you the most? Was it Sol Campbell or not? I think so. I think Sol was because <clears throat> because everyone thought he was Richard Wright, and I got a call in the morning to say there's a signing today. So I was driving to Colney, <laughs> yeah. and I and that that time I used to have to. That's when we had very open press conferences, so I had to phone all the newspaper photographers up on the way. So I was I wasn't hands free. And I phoned the guy from the Sun and the guy from the Mirror. You, we've got a signing, and they're like, "No, it's Richard Wright. It's Richard Wright." And I was like, "Okay, yeah, whatever." Blah blah blah. And I drove into Colney. The training ground manager Sean O'Connell was at the gates. Put the window down. And he just leant and he said, "It's Sol Campbell." <laughs> and I was like, "I'm not gone. I couldn't. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. And when Sol came out of Arsene's office with his agent, I was standing in the corridor. I just started laughing. He looked at me like. What is who is this idiot? But I was just <laughs> laughing because I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. No, but I suppose oh. Sol, Sol, Sol was the one really. He's the big surprise. I suppose Mesut wasn't because I knew we were signing him because we had to book flights to Germany right. a couple of days before. But Sol, Sol was the one really. That's just fascinating. Okay, so over the years, I know it's going to be hard to pick, but if you can keep, pick your top three, who's the top three funniest? Arsenal players. Funniest. Well, Ray, obviously, Ray Parler, yeah. who's a good mate of mine. A buoy, because he's nuts. Uh hold that second. Don't go to the third one. Now we had Gunner Blog on a couple of weeks right, ago. Right. And Gunner, when I said you were coming on, obviously it was the week before, but I had COVID. Um yeah. he said you've got to ask Stuart about the Abui story. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, it's quite rude. <laughs> well, I, went, I, I had to go and photograph him for the Arsenal magazine. Yeah, at his house in Barnet, or I can't remember, or can't remember where it was, and drove there one afternoon after training. <clears throat> knocked on the door, and he opened the door, and he was in full sort of Indian headdress, you know, like cowboys and Indians, like yeah, no yeah. shirt on, and he's uh, he's had a little study next to the front door. God knows what he's doing in there. He said, don't look at the screen. Don't look at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God. like, no shirt on, just a pair of shorts and his full Indian headdress. And then, oh, bless him. Yeah, and then just had like a, he's just a funny guy, like just yeah. a lovely, funny. And I saw him not long ago. Actually, it was long ago because it was before COVID. He played for the Arsenal Legends against Real Madrid and we went to Madrid and he, he's a lovely, lovely guy, like uh, funny guy, loves Arsenal, just talked about Arsenal constantly, talked about how much he loves Arsenal, just a really, really good guy. Uh, and, you know, my son, my eldest son lives in Enfield and he, he phoned me a couple of years ago and he said, does, does a Bowie live in Enfield? I said, well, why? He said, because there's a guy who looks like him wearing a Ivory Coast shirt with a Bowie on in my local, in my local gym. <laughs> I Can said, you just it's, it's him. Yeah, I said, it's him. Go and say hello to him. So he went and spoke to him. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. But oh, uh, we've had a, we've had a lot of funny. Like, yeah. I mean, 
Aaron Ramsey's a funny guy. A lot of good, good laughs with him. Look, look, they've all got sense of humour. Do you know what? Do you know who was probably Dennis? Probably Dennis Burkham. Great sense well, of humour. Proper joker. Yeah, look. There we go. This, this is one of the pictures you've sent me. So this is yeah. Dennis and Ronald McDonald. No, that's Tottenham. Tottenham away, two thousand and four, isn't it? <laughs> what is going on here? So that's a pre-season friendly in Austria. And then I think McDonald's was sponsoring the game, I think. And then and then the, so they kicked they kicked the game off. But it's always one that makes me laugh. And oh, because I love Dennis, love Dennis yeah. the bits. Uh suggested that maybe he wears uh they swap boots. Oh my god. And did he? No. <laughs> but they, but these are the sort of great times with Arsenal when we used to go out on pre-season to Austria mm. and they used to play. I'm sure a lot, a lot of people who are listening used to go on that. And there were great times because it was so, so sort of honest. You know, we'd go to these little stadiums where there'd be 3,000 people and they'd just be, what's the, it was just a day out for them. They loved Arsene. Arsene loved going. He'd walk around and talk to everyone in the stadium. There was such great, you know, we'd go and beat these team of farmers 15-0, but it didn't seem to bother anyone. It was just, it was like it was a carnival day for these towns when Arsenal came to town it felt such a nice feeling to be part of that because everyone wanted you there everyone loved you everyone loved the team and 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 Arsene really PR the team so well you know within Europe and in those sort of I think 11 12 years that we that we went to Austria oh god so many so I could spend all night talking to you Stuart um we've done the funniest who was the quietest? Who didn't like their picture or didn't want to get involved? Or... Quietest. Oh. I think, well, there was, I think back in the day, it was, if you ask Steve Bold if you could take his picture, you get told in no uncertain terms that he didn't want it. I think, I think it's a generational thing. Back in the 90s, the players didn't, they weren't interested in having their pictures taken. But obviously now with all with social media, the players value it. They've all got social media accounts. Yeah. Obviously, it makes them money. You know, it's it's good for them. Good for their, uh, you know, good good for them. Everyone to see that they're out there. They're good looking boys. They're athletes, and they can get a lot of sponsorship from it. But you know, back in the day, none of that lot wanted their pit. None of that, you know, none of the ninety eight team or the ninety one team wanted their pictures taken. It was like literally like pulling teeth trying to get him to do anything. It's funny because yes. with, with 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 Boldy, I remember trying to get Boldy to do stuff, and he was like, you know, I'm not going to say what he said to me. And then when he came, when he was at Arsenal as a coach, and I was saying, Boldy, these players won't do it. Oh, it's a disgrace that they won't do that for you. But I was like, <laughs> you were you were like this twenty years ago. Exactly. <laughs> so, I got a selfie with um, Steve Bold in Manchester. Oh, I, I was. Love Love I was at, um, going to United away and I was walking around the streets in Manchester. I was completely oblivious to the Arsenal coach there. And the guy I was with went, there's the team. I went, oh, my God. And we literally walked into them all. And, of course, all the it was um, Bellerin oh, about three, four, no, about five years ago. Right, Steve, okay. I was more interested <laughs> in Steve Bowl because that's my era, isn't it? So I was yeah, like, Stevie, yeah. can I have a picture? So I got a really nice selfie of me and him. Yeah, he's a he's a good he's a good mate. He's a good bloke. Anyone Love else Love quiet Bowl. that doesn't really want to be near the camera uh, nowadays more? I think no, not really. I think they're old. That they, they, they accept that uh media's different now, mm. that they have that they have to be photographed. And that's it. I can only really relate relate it to what players are asking me for pictures. And there's there are certain players who aren't fussed, who just get on with it. I'm not going to say who they are, but uh, some players are more interested than than others. And then you know, it's it, it's just you know, it's just a personal thing for them. Can I say that if if um, one of those players that you're not going to say for me, it would be Kieran Tierney doesn't seem interested in pictures, social media, or anything. Am I wrong? No, look, look we, we'll, we'll send KT pictures, but only because we do, because we take them and he'll... Look, it, I think we, we send them to them because we do out of a sort of sense of duty. They don't always use them. They always say mm. thank you, and then that's it. 
what they do afterwards. Some players yeah. aren't interested. Yeah, mm. I mean, I remember with Jack Wilshire, Jack, Jack was like, I've got my tongue out in that picture. It's like, Jack, but you've got a tongue out in every single picture. <laughs> so, uh, but you get you get some who ask more than others. But, uh, you know, in a way, it's it's nice to be wanted. So I'll be a bit, I'll be a bit, I'll be a bit upset if the players stop sending me requests for pictures. Oh, so let's just go through some of the pictures now. Okay. So some of them, I'm just going to randomly pick the ones. So these aren't my best, as I said to you, these aren't my best pictures. These are just some of my favourites. That so, doesn't, uh, that's fine. So you can explain to us why this is one of your favourites. It'd be one of my favourites and millions and millions of Gunas' favourites. We've got our Rocky and our Righty. So this was, so this was a picture. Uh, this was like a random Ars Southampton Arsenal game mm -hmm. back in, I think, was it 90 or 91? It was, there was no... You know, I got the train down there with a friend of mine, another photographer called Mark Leach, great photographer, good mate of mine. Shot it even even after the game. It wasn't we didn't syndicate to the newspapers or anything. It's just like, oh, it's a nice picture. But this is one of those pictures that I look back at now and think it's one of my. At the time, it was like a throwaway picture because I kept thinking, fuck, um, oh, sorry, I kept That's thinking, right. <laughs> I haven't got Ian Wright in focus here. I've got Rocky in focus, and Ian Wright scored the goal. But every time. I think of Rocky, I think of this picture. And I know Wrighty, I know Wrighty loves it. And it's been a picture that I'll, you know, I'll always keep it in my top ten because of the two people, because of because of Rocky, yeah. because of the kit, because yeah. of the time, you know, the day out that I had with my mate. And it and it just always, you know, technically it's not the greatest picture, but for me it's just a moment in time. Two best mates together. The only season they played together at Arsenal. It's an emotional picture for me, and I'm sure. It, and and I know it is variety as well. So that's that's why it's up there. Oh, I love it. Oh no, I think I think it's a beautiful picture. It and, and it really encapsulates them two as players, absolutely, and their love for each other as well. And I think if Wrighty would have been around now, his social media would explode every time. <laughs> yeah, I, I can just imagine it. Social media. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's you know it's a, it's so I wouldn't don't like to say it, but it it has become quite an iconic picture, it and is. and it, and you know it's a bit weird because where the where the photographers sit at Southampton, there was like another ten photographers sitting side by side with me, and I've never seen an, another picture of that celebration from any of the other photographers. It's very strange. I don't know. I don't know what they were looking at. You just caught an absolute brilliant moment, didn't you? It really yeah, you, is. Get, you get a bit lucky. No, it's a gorgeous picture. <laughs> um, we're going to jump backwards and forwards. So this one, I love yeah. this picture. Yeah, I, you know, it was for me, it was, and I said it to Mikel on the day, because he's absolutely brilliant. After the final, he, he, I was on the pitch and he came and he hugged me and I just said to him, this is, I just said to him, this is just the start. This is the start. And uh, the feeling in the dressing room was incredible. And all the players were in. All the players were in already. Mikel was outside with the trophy. The music was being played. And then I just followed Mikel. And he danced into the dressing room and started dancing around with the players. And for me, it was so alien to me because Arsene was... So different to Arsene, but then it made me think the age difference is. Oh, can you imagine yeah. Arsene Wenger doing that? That's never no. going to happen, is it? But it was so, it was so fresh to me that he came in and did that, and the players didn't look at him and go, "Oh my God, this why is this old bloke dancing with it?" <laughs> it felt like a lot of there was so much unity within that, and I was lucky where the crest was, where the players were. Uh, it was, and it was just a great, just a great moment. It felt so good, and 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 that's a real start to Mikel's career as Arsenal manager. It must be so strange, though, Stuart. It's your job; you have to capture the pictures, but yet you're a gooner, and your team's just won the FA Cup. So seriously, you have got the best job ever. Best job sometimes, but you know, I've on the. I've, Travel back on the coach of the boys after losing the cup final against Liverpool. 
Mm-hmm. Now, there's, there, you know, there's tough times, but you've got to – the tough times make the good times even better, you know. No, we you know, I've come home from I've got home from games at five o'clock in the morning, you know, from from being up in the north of England and yeah, so sat 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 you know, sat driving back in wet clothes and stuff. Look, it's not I've got a lot of mates who've got really challenging jobs who hate their jobs, get out can't even get out of bed in the morning. I've never not wanted to go to work since I've been here, <laughs> which which I'm blessed with. But there are, you know, there are tough times. There are tough times because ultimately you're you're led on results from the men's team, from the youth team, from the women's team. You know, your life is around is is results based. Of course, of course. And as a fan, it's the same thing, Stuart. We are yeah. results based, aren't we? I had to do a post game show when we lost to. Um... Oh my god, my brain's gone. Palace on Monday night. Mm. The last thing I wanted to do was come on this show and talk about the club that have just lost 3 0 at Selhurst Park. But yeah, again, it's, look, it's, I it's, promised look, them I'd do it, and it's just such a shame, but yeah, I it's just look, with it. It's tough, but as we as I said earlier, there's gonna there's gonna be bumps in the road. Young team, young manager. We all knew that. We all knew that. I think just What's been incredible for, incredible for me this season is the connection between the players and the fans. It's been, I, I said, I messaged well, I can't, a few senior people and just said, I haven't seen anything like this, you know, for 15 years. And this is something that, this is something that Mikel and the players, certainly Mikel has wanted to do and has made sure that there is a connection and, and, you know, it will only get better. Yeah. Did you take that um, picture at Villa of the fans? I took a lot of pictures <clears> of the fans <throat> at Villa. Fantastic picture of the fans. <laughs> oh, it's you. You need to do more of those. We, I love seeing the fans, and you're absolutely a hundred percent right. There is. It's been so toxic over the years. I go to quite a few away games up north because I've got friends in Liverpool, Manchester. And I stand in the, the away, and I love going to away games because the mm. atmosphere is phenomenal. And it's just been toxic, and it's not been great. And the only away game I've been to this year was at the Etihad, so that's not so good because that would be very <laughs> good. Yeah, but I wasn't with the fans; I was with my friends in the city end. And um, but it is amazing, and, and we can hear it. You know, when we're we're watching at home, when we're listening, we can hear our fans. And even at Selhurst Selhurst Park, at the end, they were singing Mikhail's name. You know, you wouldn't have had that four or five years ago. No, with, look, and that means don't think don't think that doesn't mean a lot to him, and don't think that doesn't mean a lot to the to the to the players. I mean, there's a lot of talk at Colney about the about the fans. They talk about the fans all the time. The players do, the coaching staff do. They want them, and it and it helps them so much. The fans have been absolutely unbelievable, and I'd love. I love to see them enjoying themselves. The songs are brilliant. I've got a lot of mates, obviously got a lot of mates who go and they're buzzing, you know, and, and that's what we've got to keep going. We've got to keep the positivity going. But if we don't finish on top four, we start again next season. Yeah. And we and we go again. That's it. Back the manager, back the players. These players are going to get better every for the next five, six, seven years. You know, it's you know, we we will be there. We will be there, but we've just got to be patient. Yeah, exactly. Oh, good. Yes, patience. A lot of people don't have it, but they're so fantastic to hear that they, I've always said this, that we're like the 12th man, you know, we can spur them on. We can, we need to support them. Whether you agree with who Mikel brings on as a sub or starts as the squad, yeah. that's that's his first 11. That's who's playing that day. You support them nonetheless. Okay. As a fan, you know, it's like you go down the pub, which... The pub now has become like social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, to go and moan. That's fine. That's being a football fan. You're going to moan if your team doesn't do very well. But, yeah, the support. And it's so lovely to hear that that they appreciate that because it ha- it came from them. Their performances, the fact that they, you know, I, I've always said this, Stuart. I watched at the Etihad. We were absolutely diabolical that day, atrocious. We were slaughtered, yet the boys all went over to the fans at the very end and clapped them. The more they do that, the more they did that, the more the connections come back, and it is. And even the Emirates now, it, it, the atmosphere is great at the Emirates, and yeah. I, I can't wait to get to my seat on Saturday and go again 
and beat the seagulls that's all i can say the man city one was interesting because it could have been it could have been easy for the players <clears throat> to walk off but they stood in front of the arsenal fans for three or four minutes and applauded them and i think that for me that was like a real turning point the connection yeah. between the players and the fans because actually i think the fans appreciated that it wasn't a quick and then go they they realized that they in some people's eyes had let the fans down and that connection now like you know wolves away was unbelievable and yeah. the celebrations you know i don't care what anyone says about celebrate we celebrate together we win together we lose together we celebrate together oh yeah celebration and please. that's Take it of that. Do you know on the final whistle i was on i had I thought right who would i need to follow on the final whistle i was like ben white i'm on ben white that's it ben please give me a good picture on the final whistle so i was just following the last two minutes that's it yeah is it this one yeah 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 <laughs> and i look i love ben to bits he's such a great guy and he's so passionate as well and then straight after that, took a shirt off, ran into the crowd, gave it to a little kid. I mean, they it's not false, it's honest. Yes. You know, these guys, these guys understand exactly what the fans can do for them. I just love this picture. And I was when I was looking at it before, I couldn't work out what game it was. And as you said, Wolves, I thought, I bet you anybody, yeah. this is Wolves, because it meant so much to him, the team, and us. Yeah. And and also the connection's been brought, Stuart, by Arteta as well, as much as the players, it's Arteta as well. He brought in Ben White and Ben White has walked into this team and I'm very happy he's in our defence, thanks very much. And as you're, you're right, the patience and they will get better. He's a great look. He's quality. He's a, he's a real character, but he's an absolutely top draw footballer. Otherwise, he wouldn't, you wouldn't pay that amount of money for him. No, that's absolutely very true. And, yeah, he's only going to get better and better. Him and Gabriel together, for sure. Love that picture. I love it. And how he felt is how we felt. We, yeah. And it's and very me, and, and me as well. And me as well. But I had to control myself. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know how you do that. I'd be jumping on the pitch with my camera. Um, <laughs> he's, you know, it's very true. We win together, we lose together. That's for sure. Right. I'm going to just jump to that beautiful picture, Stuart. That is stunning. Not bad, is it? That's beautiful. <laughs> for the for the sort of technical people, that's on a remote camera that I set up before the game, bolted onto the stands, and fired from pitch side. Because if you can, if you look down to the right hand corner behind the advertising boards, there's a lot of people in blue bibs, and I'm the one on mm. the right hand side in the red. Mm. So so we've got. You know, we, we bolt cameras on the roof and in certain places within the stadium, and we can fire them from pitch side. So. It's a bit. It's a bit lucky, but it's you know it shows. And I, I know a lot of I know a lot of sort of older Arsenal fans don't like Emirates, but it's a beautiful stadium, and now we're starting to create some really good atmospheres. So uh, enjoy it. We're not going back to Highbury, unfortunately. No, it will never be Highbury. But yes, you're right. No, of course it, not. Absolutely. Of course not. It's, it's, you know, it's different. You know, I love Main Road. As mm. you know, it was one of my favourite grounds to go to. The Etihad is soulless half empty you know we've got we've got full stadiums every week with with a great atmosphere just lovely i love that picture it's beautiful just just lovely really enjoy that one okay so the next picture we got Stu, is our fabregas yeah like he divides opinion but this is not a bad game this is i think was it the second goal of i think he scored he scored straight from the kickoff didn't we so that this is Spurs, was, isn't it? Yeah, Spurs. Yeah. So we we scored and then <clears> and then <throat> Cesc ran straight through and scored the second. Look, and and they, and I put it in because uh, I'm still I'm still in contact with Cesc. Cesc loves Arsenal, always loved Arsenal. One of the greatest players who's ever played for Arsenal. Yeah. And don't think that he doesn't want Arsenal to win. You know, and and it, it's just a. Yeah, to score. I can you imagine scoring a winning goal in a derby. You know, Nicholas Bentner scored one, but <laughs> Cesc scored. <laughs> Cesc scored this one. And the thing about Cesc was, I saw him play as a sixteen-year-old, and he was. As soon as you saw him, you just thought this kid's going to be world class. So for me, it's a pleasure to photograph him. And and this is just like such a great. This is one of the great atmospheres at Emirates. 
that game, especially that goal after, you know, just running from the halfway line, just a, you know, just a great, just a great day. It, look, beating Spurs is great, but beating Spurs when you score straight from the kickoff is even better. Oh, it's just, I mean, you've got, I'm, I'm assuming, I think that's Van Bronckhurst, isn't it, on the left? No, that's Eduardo. Oh, Edu. No, it's Edu, isn't it? Eduardo. Is it Edu? And, yeah, Eduardo. Yeah. Eduardo. 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 I thought yeah. it was Van Bronckhurst when I was looking at it. No, um, he, he never played it. He never played it. No, Emirates, of course. did he? I get all my eras mixed up in all my yeah. uh, stadiums. That's old age, Amanda. <laughs> I get, the, I, I get the same as well. It all blurs into one when you're in your fifties, yeah. doesn't it, Stu? Sadly. <laughs> um, and then we got a young Robin Van Persie who. Yeah. To me, Stuart completely disrespected the club. So. Yeah, look, you can you can say he did, but he was a great he was a great play. You cannot say he didn't. He was always he was always going to go. I just think maybe it was sad that he went where he went. You know, I, it's I how he did it, Stu. It's it, how he did it yeah, to go there and go. The little boy inside of me. You don't yeah. have to do that. But look, everyone. Everyone will always say something to endear themselves to the new club they're going to. Don't ever think that what they're saying is completely honest from the of heart. Course. Yeah. So, you know, and it's, I mean, I, I had a conversation with Robin a couple of years before he left and he said, you're an Arsenal fan. You'll be here forever. He said, this is my career. And that was a really poignant uh, conversation with me. And, and it, and it did, you know, the modern day footballer now is it's their career. You know, the boys back in the sort of six, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, it was like one club men, weren't they? So I can, I can understand. I don't, I love Robin to bits. There are players who have left who I don't like, but ultimately I can understand why, you know, why, why would they, you know, why they'd leave. I don't hold a grudge. You know? You know, holding oh, a grudge against, yeah, but I think <laughs> holding a grudge against Ashley Cole and Sesk certainly, I just think it, it's a bit ridiculous. No, do you know what it is, Jay? Let me let me tell you what it is. Yeah, it's the way you leave a club. Bakary yeah. Sanya left our club and sent us the most beautiful note as fans. That's how you leave a club. Ashley Cole moaning about fun wages and stuff like that, and what a player Ashley Cole was. One of the best. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd never say it wasn't. Robin Van Persie desperately didn't want him to go. But don't leave the club that treated you so well and the fans loved you in that way. Well, I've, we got can, no, yeah. I've, well, Stuart, I've got can, no problem with anyone no. leaving our club. That's that's right. You're Arsenal. It's their career. You're not going to get an Adams. You're not going to get a Shearer. You're not no. going to get a Gerrard, are you? The closest one to that at the moment is Harry Kane. You know, he's stayed at Tottenham and we don't know what's going to go on now. And I totally get that. But leave it with a bit of dignity and a bit of respect. That's yeah. all I ask. Yeah. But I would say that every player who's come back has come to the dressing room, spoken to the staff, loved by the staff. A lot of what, a lot of what you see in the public is might not be what they want to portray, but is easy to portray because there's an agenda from the media or from a certain club or whatever. But, you know, ultimately, <clears throat> what would Spurs fans think about Sol Campbell coming to Arsenal? Well, we know what they think. I've well, got exactly. <laughs> so, so, it's like Tony Adams going to Tottenham. You would yeah. never, ever, ever get over it. They've yeah, never so, got over it. Yeah, they still haven't. Well, so, you know, Robin's gone to Man United. If that's our, if that's our Spurs Sol Campbell, I'll take that. Because who's gone to Spurs from Arsenal to win anything? Did Pat Jennings go to Spurs or did he come from Spurs to Arsenal? Because it's literally came, to, my came time. to us. Right, so from Spurs to Arsenal. And then, I don't know, Frank Stapleton, didn't he? He went to United. I don't have a problem, honestly. Yeah, with Spurs, I would. And it's not happened to us. But no. anyway, let's, let's go on to someone who we all love, completely respect. It's our Thierry. Yeah, that's... You know, it's always been one of my favourite pictures because <clears throat> obviously he's, there's lots of celebrations, but this is so athletic. So, you know, this is Thierry all over. Just for me, it just sums, up, sums him up, really. Photographically, it's like back in the day where 
we used to photograph on film and manual focus so it's quite tricky to get things in focus but it's just Thierry mid-flight eye on the ball just a lovely picture I don't even you... think we I think we drew three all as well that guy I don't okay think we what's the team Stu I can't work it out Blackburn Blackburn Rovers right and that's Sylvan Wiltard in the background yeah, that's not I... that's not Gio that's not Gio Van Bronckhorst <laughs> I know that's Wiltard um I love that. So, who took the iconic knee slide in front of the Tottenham fan picture? Not, not me, because I was at the other end. Right. So, uh, do you know what? I don't know. There's a few who got it, uh, but they. But do you know what? What I, what I'm quite proud of. Obviously, I was working for Arsenal. I photographed him kicking towards the north bank. The photographer who got the knee slide was a photographer who thought Spurs were going to score. So he was sat in front of the Tottenham fans mm. doing Tottenham attack. So you might get that, but in a way, it's a bit of a false picture because that photographer wanted a Tottenham celebration, <laughs> not an Arsenal celebration. <laughs> so th that's always my excuse. I was at the other end where the goal went in, not doing Tottenham attack. So I could name and shame, but I'm not going to. Could embarrass a, could, could okay. embarrass a photographer. Now, I wondered why you chose this one, but it's lovely to see our manager, who doesn't look much different, does he? No, no. Um, we've got Cazorla, Giroud, Mertesaka. Is that Theo on the back yeah, of Arteta? Theo. Do you know what? Because it's, cause it's a, and Jovino as well. Because it's a group, it's a group of people that I've got a lot of affection for. Oh. And it and it was, you know, it was one all, he drew one all against Man City, Lauren Koscielny scored. And it was just one of those where Man City were just starting to be dominant, and and we deserved it. And we, it, you know, we ground out a one all, and we deserved it. And it showed a lot of backbone, a lot of steel, and a lot of unity as well. And obviously, I love you know, Mikel's face as well. It's always a picture that mm. I've got a lot of affection for because it's got a few of my favourite players. Pear is a great guy, loved him to bits. Santi's one of my favourite ever Arsenal players. And whatever you say about Oli, Giroud, dug us out of so many holes. And and Theo scored over 100 goals. Yeah. And, and Mikel's our manager. He's at, he's at the top of the pile there, So which is where he is now. Great picture. It's great. I love it. I, I, listen, I've got a lot of respect for Giroud. Absolutely. He did dig us out. He just um, went to Chelsea. He's probably <laughs> drunk. He's, he's, when he said that stuff about thank you, Arsenal, on the plane, he's probably drunk. How many people have said something stupid when they're drunk? I know, but it's so, we're so protective of our club. All football fans yeah. are so protective of their club. You know, we can slag them off, me and you, yeah. Stu, but anyone else dare do it. It's not an Arsenal fan, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. I mean, maybe I should be a bit. Because I know them as personalities and characters. I'm a bit softer on them. Yes. Uh, we don't know them the way you do. You know them yeah. as... They're colleagues of yours when you look at it like that, aren't they? Just, yeah. Just... Well, yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I've been around to Oli Giroud's to photograph his, you know, his wife with his, with the kids and stuff. I spent time in his house and, yeah. you, know, you know, a lovely guy, lovely family, lovely kids. So when you, know. you hear him being slated and slagged off, you know the man himself. We just yeah. know the footballer. I get Yeah, him. but, I've, you know, I've been in the game long enough. There's, I'm not going to say, there's there's probably two or three players who have left Arsenal who I don't like. But generally, you know, you can probably guess who I don't like, but I'm not going to say. Mm, probably. <laughs> <laughs> right this is someone who left arsenal that we all love who all hated on monday night but we all love him to pieces yeah. our patrick vieira on the marble steps at high yeah. Ray. and yeah and it was just like that was a day that we took him to see emirates during when it was being built and it was just i just said can we just do this picture and he's like oh so he met Patrick's lovely but miserable. It's like, oh, I can't be bothered. Can't be bothered. <laughs> you have to, you have to sort of say, come on, Patrick, come on, Pat. And it's just a nice, just a nice bit. I've tried to replicate it a few times with it, with other players, but it's it's just never quite the same. You can't, I love that picture. you can't repeat it. You can't. I did. Do you know? What? I did it with Leah Williamson uh, last year, and that's the closest it's come to the sort of, in my mind, sort of iconic picture. And she looks brilliant when she's doing it. But she's dressed, she's so trendy. She's dressed up 
and she looks really cool. But yeah, uh, but Patrick is you know in that and in that uh, uh, top as well and those trainers. Yeah. Love it. It's cool. That's a cool pick. Where do I go next? Let's do come jump right back to now. Our boy. Yeah. And do you know what? It just doesn't look like him. No, right. <laughs> I looked at it. I did look at it. I've seen this before. And I looked at it before and I thought, oh yes, yeah, ESR, isn't it? Yeah. What a picture. Look at I that. just think that I just think that's him. I think a lot of young players now are quite they're very sort of image savvy. But that was just an absolute moment of complete elation where he couldn't hold himself in. So, uh, and I think that's the best time to photograph people when you, especially footballers, when they when they might be looking at you, but ultimately they're just caught in the moment, you know. And that was the third goal against Aston Villa. Always nice to beat Villa, isn't it? Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I, he's a he's a great. What a player this kid can be! Oh, Absolutely I know, unbelievable. I know him and Saka, and that song is so fabulous, isn't it? Absolutely it is great. Love it's it. great. Yeah, it's great. Right, I'm got two left, and I don't, I'm going to do this one next because I'm actually in this photo. I yeah. love this. So I sit in the East End Upper. Uh, I sat in the East End Upper of Highbury. So. <sighs> That stand you photograph, left is the North Bank, obviously, and yeah. over there, I'm row seven in there. And I try to zoom in when you sent them to me. I think I can just about see my dad. Right. And I, for me, my stand, my ground, I love yeah. this picture. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm in, I'm in it as well. So if you look to the bottom right, yep, there's no. a... The, there's guys in orange and then the one in front in a white yeah. sort of bib, that's me. Is that you? Yeah, so so this is fine. This is from the TV gantry on the on the uh west like you know where the old TV gantry was. So that was like a camera bolted on and I waited till the end of the game and turned it on and shot it from there. <coughs> but it for me it just says it just says hybrid. Yes. Because you look through these two stands and you see the terrace houses, yeah. And it's what is you know it's one of those that I'll be very proud of because I think I'd mean, like to I think that people will look back in a hundred years and go, wow, look at that, look at those houses. Not 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 what's going on on the pitch, but look where that football stadium was. Look where it was in in you know in the middle of all in the middle of the city, you know the tower yeah. blocks in the background. Mm. Was this the day when Robert Perez was injured and he walked? No, up? no, that was two thousand and two. This is two thousand and four. Four, yeah, it was the wrong one. I thought he yeah. walked up, didn't he, on his crutches? I was in yeah, tears. Yeah, I could, I could have put that. I could have put that in. But oh, I you've got that one. Okay. Yeah, but I've got. Yeah, I've got another weird one because I'm the only person who has got the picture of everyone bowing down to Robert, and we had like fifty photographers there that day. I think maybe they were on the wrong lens or. That's a beautiful picture, though. That is yeah. one of the iconic ones, isn't it? I love that. Um, right, the last one. I had to save this for the last because I absolutely love this picture. This is yeah. This is incredible. the the way The way the stadium. No one can see what I'm doing, but the way the stadium curves round, the way the players, and then the way he walks out like that. It's oh a, my god! I got a bit lucky. This is a bit lucky because I'm just the shape really works. I was going to choose another one of him out on the pitch uh, that I shot from up high, but I just thought the sort of symmetry in it photographically is really unique. And uh, yeah, I just love it. Like, a, I love him. So I love this picture. But I think it's just a lovely picture. Are you just... still in contact with Wenger now? Uh, I've seen him a few times. He, do you know, he funny, he phoned me to ask for some help with his biography for some pictures. And I was out walking my three year old on Highbury Fields. And the first thing he said was, Hi, Stuart, I can hear your son. How is he? Are you mm -hmm. looking after him? And then, uh, and then they had that evening with him and David Dean at the, uh, Palladium, and he was doing his sound check. 
with all these busy people running around him. And I walked through the seating and he just said, Stuart, Stuart. And he wanted to have a conversation with me and all these, all these people with headphones on. But Mr. Wenger, can you sit? He's like, no, no, I talk, I talk to, I talk to Stuart now. So it was lovely. And it was lovely. To, it's lovely to, you know, he's did so much for me. Yeah. Career wise, because he gave me so much access, I can never thank him enough. And I, I love him. He's like, he's what he's done for us is what he's done for me. Absolutely unbelievable. Yes. We were so lucky. We were so lucky. Some of the managers we've had, you know, for me, George Graham started it, Fenger pushed it on that, that further part. We've had such amazing times and such. Such sad times. So 2006 um, is my only European away game I've ever gone to, and it was the Stade de right. France. So were you there? Yes. Unfortunately, I went mm. out with a load of my mates. What, the final, the Zaragoza? Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, Barcelona, the Champions League final. Oh, right. Oh, sorry, I thought you meant that. Yeah, yeah I was there. Yeah, of course, yeah. Do you know, I didn't say a word from the final whistle until I got home that night to anybody. I was so, I was so upset. I was so upset. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it was hot. Yeah, it was horrible. It was horrible. But, I felt, uh, I felt like, I mean, obviously I flew home. I, I actually was a bit like you. I don't think I spoke to anyone on the plane. I just yeah. had the ump. You know, I was just like, oh, it was so close. So, so close. But, yeah, it was. Look, it's tough. What's you know, we, we'll get there again. I'm sure of it. It will take a bit of time, but I've never felt that we're in a. I think everything's so positive now because I think we're on the right track. We've yeah. got the right manager. We've got ambitious young players, and I honestly <clears> think, and this isn't from a club perspective. I think in in maybe two years we could be certainly challenging to win the league. If you know, if Mikel gets the players that he wants, and that's down to the club, you know, and the club is massively ambitious. So let's see, you know, if we can get back to, you know, I never ever thought we get. We had the we had, you know, I've been around for ninety one, two thousand two, two thousand, you know, two thousand and four. To get that back again would be incredible. And honestly, I've told the boys before I retire, we've got to win the league again. I'm not going anywhere until we're in the league again. Win the league and the Champions League, and that, and then I can die happy because <laughs> I've seen everything else. I just haven't seen the Champions League. Yeah. Um, everyone in the chat, um, if you want to get a couple of questions in, if Stuart doesn't mind hanging on another few more minutes, no, have, fine. You're no sure? Problem. Get yeah. your questions in now because I've done all the pictures and I could just sit talking to Stuart about memories over the years. So this is now your time. Anything you want to ask, I will put up. Um, in the meantime, let me just ask you a quick question. What famous person, non-footballer, would you ever love to photograph? Ooh, probably Muhammad Ali, I think. Hmm. Probably. I photographed Nelson Mandela. I was going to ask you about that because he came to Arsenal, didn't he? No, I photographed him when I was oh. away with the England rugby team in 1994 in South Africa. <coughs> so... Uh, Oh. Yeah, so I was freelancing, so I worked for the RFU at that time. So uh, yeah, I think I think Ali, I think. Okay. Thoughts. So. I've got a couple of questions. <laughs> right, so we're going to start with this one: curved glass. One, two, three. Thanks for your question, Stuart. Your favourite player? Dennis. Oh. <laughs> by no mile. hesitance. Yeah. Absolutely by mile for. Not only for the player, but for also the way that he speaks about the club now and about the way that he behaves. Because there are ex-players who don't, who disrespect the football club. Yeah, I'm not going to name them. No. But, no I've said it, but I've said it to their faces. Oh, have you? Good. Yes. Okay, cool. Dennis. Right, so I've got one here. Carl Stark, who's Stuart's favourite non-Arsenal player? Favourite non-Arsenal player? Do you know what? Duncan Ferguson. Oh, okay. Big As dunk. a player. 
that anyone who breaks into your house and then you beat them up while they're trying to escape is, is fine with me. No, Duncan, I think Duncan Ferguson, but there's been oh, it's too many, too many, too many. Do you know what? I, who I loved? I loved uh, Cyril Regis, absolutely, when I was growing up. What a player. But I think Duncan Ferguson, just because he was such a brute. And it, when I played Sunday football, I would have loved to have been like him. That he just fight everybody, but I just used to get beaten up on a Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah, big dunk. Oh, that's cool. Um, a couple of things. The Visionites have said, thanks for all your great pictures, Stuart. I will be thanking him at the end, don't you worry. Okay, so picture a uh, question from mostly Arsenal. Lenses, do you interchange or have an all rounder? If so, what's your go to? We I use three cameras during the game, so I have a long we call it a gold mouth lens, which is a mid range zoom. Sorry if it's you don't understand photography, so it's eighty to two hundred zoom lens, which is a gold mouth lens, and then a long lens for your sort of midfield action which is a i use a 500 millimeter f.4 and then i keep a wide angle next to me in case the players jump into the crowd which is a <coughs> uh 17 to 24 so three three cameras three lenses and then maybe another camera in the stands okay cool thank you for your question mostly arsenal right question from adam park this is interesting actually i didn't think of this Stuart, thanks for your service to the club. What's it been like dealing with the Amazon Prime cameraman going around with you lot? And have they got much content themselves? They're, do you know what? They're a, they're a really good group. They're Obviously, everyone's quite sceptical when they first came in. But when you get to meet them, it's not within their interest to, to stitch the club up because ultimately they're going to ask for another club to do the yeah. same thing. But the group, the cameramen, we're, that we're... They're good guys. They love what they do. They're passionate about what they do. I I haven't seen any of the stuff that they've filmed, but by all accounts from people who have seen it, they said the first three uh, programs are absolutely incredible. But they they're so good at what they do. I think I think people are going to really love this uh, this documentary. They're going to want us to get top four, aren't they? Just just for the thrill are. of what from 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 the Etihad and Chelsea at the beginning to this is like a whole massive yeah. story. It's fantastic yeah. for them. Oh, they'll love it. They'll love it, and uh, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. There's going to oh, be some. Wait. They might hopefully there might be a couple of cameo appearances, but you never know. Going to be asking for your autograph soon. Cool. Um, Adam Park, thank you for your question. Well, I want to know this. Hatchy964, Stuart, how do you stop yourself from jumping up when we score a goal? Isn't it your first instinct or is it your first instinct to take a picture? Well, I did. When we played in the semi-final against Spurs 93 at Wembley, I was at the other end and then Tony Adams scored the header and I fell back off my seat and was celebrating. And I looked <laughs> up and looked at 15 photographers just glaring at me and I thought, this is not the appropriate behavior and that was the last time that i sort of celebrated but it's one of those that you you just get conditioned because ultimately your job is your job and you have to you know we can win the game if you've got no pictures then you know what you've been doing so i can i sort of celebrate in my head a little bit and and and, and for me looking around at the crowd celebrating and the players celebrating that's enough for me. And then I'll have a beer after the game. But, I'd, you know, if I, if I was in the stands, I'd jump up and down. Of course, yeah. Absolutely. But I've got my cameras. It's my job. You know, I'm just, I'm honestly, when they score, I'm the happiest person in the ground. I might not show it because I just think, get the picture, get the picture, get the picture so I can show everyone what we've done. Yeah, I get that. Thanks, Hatchie, for your questions. I've got a few more if you don't mind hanging on. Um, Harry, how do you stay focused during the pure emotion of a game when we've just scored an important goal? I think sort of you just covered that, but stay in focus. I mean, say, for instance, yeah, Wolves, when we needed that last minute winner, are you Stuart the photographer or Stuart the gooner? You know, what's weird is there's a TV mic near where I sit in the second half. And do you know what I do? I move it because I do shout and stuff and I do, 
I'm worse than I am. And when the subs come and warm down, you know, they come and warm up in my corner and I'm shouting stuff at them, at the, play, the players. <laughs> but it's not, you know, it's not, it's not bad stuff. It's like constructive and because I just think, and you know, anything can help. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I talk to myself and I, you know, I'm just, I'm terrible. I mean, if you took the cameras away from me, I couldn't watch a game. But because I've got something to think about, it uh, it helps. But the Lacker's goal against uh, Wolves, and it was his goal. I don't care what anyone says. For me, I just, Lacker scores. I love Lacker. Great captain, great guy. Everyone loves him. For me, it's just like, this is a great moment because this yeah. is what he deserves. And I'd love to, pressing the finger on the button, taking pictures of him running towards me, smiling, because this is exactly what he deserves. And it and it's emotional, you know, just so every time I press the button on the goal celebration, I think this is amazing. We've got, how long have I got you for, Stu? Well, whatever. I'm fine. Oh, okay, because there's some brilliant questions coming in. Um, <clears throat> Arsenal for life, your favourite Arsenal team? This one. Oh, wow, Okay. No, no, look, no! I didn't think you were going to say that. Actually, <laughs> look, there's there's so many for so many different reasons. I love the '91 team because they yeah. were so close to going unbeaten, and one of the most underrated. The Invincibles are the Invincibles, yeah. but yeah, the, I think the '91 '89 was incredible because I was quite young and raw then, and just you know, I used to go to those games. And think, where's Dennis Bergkamp going to score the winner in '98? So I used to sit myself in the same position every game, and every game Dennis would just passed the ball into the corner. It's like, thanks, Dennis. But do you know what? I love this team. This team, I'm not going to say that they, they might not ever be the best, but as a group, this is this is a really likable group of very elite sportsmen. They might never reach the levels of the Invincibles. But it's you know it's a it's a great group, but ultimately who who are you going to say Amanda Invincibles? No, mine would be eighty nine. Right, okay. <laughs> I mean, I cannot not say anything, yeah. but eighty nine, I really really can't. Um, but again, we have had some wonderful wonderful teams, and I think if you, if I remember correctly, because I'm really useless with um, games and eras, the the ninety one was that. Chelsea, Steve Bold bandaged round the head at Chelsea and we lost, lost the game. Lost 2 1 at Chelsea, yeah. Right. Lost two, so one. I was there for that and I've not right. been, to, I've only been to Chelsea about five, six times. And I remember thinking, oh my God, we, we're so close. And he had blood yeah. pouring from his head. So I remember the odd things about um, things back then, but yeah, I remember they, that. They, look, they were, we've had some great teams and I, <clears throat> I think emotionally, the Invincibles, because of what they did of and the players, elite players, absolutely unbelievable. Every member in the squad was just so brilliant. 91, 89. But I find it weird with 89 because a few of those players now are mates of mine. So so it's a bit difficult. Who's the best team? Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> it's only Boldy, isn't it? But we, we, look, we've been blessed. We've been blessed with some unbelievable players and some great teams, haven't we? Yeah. It's funny because Kev Campbell's a mate of mine and we've been we've been friends for quite a few years and we've been podding together and stuff. And he he often says to me, he tells me little stories about, you know, he was in the crowd that night and right. it to me, that's my era, that's my my it's my world, the eighties, Tony Adams. You know, yeah. Martin Keown, Lee Dixon, Nigel Winterburn. So whenever I'm on a podcast with Lee Dixon, and Alan Smith's a friend of mine as well, I'm like, I just, I just like go like, oh, like all like, like in my element, like I could just want to talk to you all night. You know, forget the yeah. show, I just want to talk to you. Yeah. Right, got loads of questions. Carl Stark, this is quite a good one. Thank you, Carl. Which young players should we keep an eye out for who have not broken into the first team yet? <sighs> I mean, it's probably not fair for me to ask to to answer that. There, there's some good players. I mean, there are, a lot of the young players come over, train with the first team. I'm not going to name any names. Okay, fair but enough. But there's some there, there's some really good young players there. Uh, 
the the boys that are on the bench against Palace, there's a lot of quality there. But uh, you know, let let the football people who know talk about them, and I'll photograph them. We tried to get it out of you, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> that's fair enough. Um, Terence Dibbs, and I like this question. Thanks, Terence. What's the most unexpected thing you have caught on camera? So it's not really a football one. It's a rugby one because I worked at the Rugby World Cup in 1999 in Cardiff and I got a picture of a Argentinian player gouging, uh, which is sticking your finger in the eye of uh, Garen Jenkins, who's a Welsh rugby player, right. which was won a few awards around the world and basically just gave me a bit of confidence to put myself out there and get the job at Arsenal. So that was unexpected. I was just there photographing a ruck. I know people don't like rugby. And it was there. Finger came in. Guy stuck his finger Oof. in someone's eye. And it, and it, I was quite not a great photographer at the time, lacking a bit of confidence. I won that. And then it pushed me to elevate my career into being confident and becoming a better photographer. Probably got me where I am now on that, on that one picture. That's fantastic to catch that. I've got so many. I'm just going to have to pick a couple more because we could be no, all night. Fine. No, it's fine. I'm, I'm happy to. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So I like this question. David Ziegler. Hi, David. Does the constant barrage of new Adidas gear create a lot of work for you? Yeah, it creates work, but it's, you know, it's good. There are, there are you know, the stuff, some of the kits have been incredible. They're, they're a really brilliant company to work with. And for me, I love their kits back in the day as well. I love the way that they're... Uh, I mean, I've seen the kits for next season and the season after. They're unbelievable. And it and it start, it's a little bit different to how we work normally. So it's great to photograph it. And mm. you know, I, I love it, Adidas. You know, the stuff's incredible. It is. The kits, the jerseys now yeah. are the best ever. Um, thanks, David. The Visionites. Um, Stuart, who do you think are the strongest personalities in the dressing room now? Mikel. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> He's the strongest, is he? No, I think well, your manager always is, isn't it? Your manager is. I, I think you can see it. Not not for me to say, because I'm not, I'm not in the dressing room, but you know, the football teams are, in, are made on their... It's all about the manager, isn't it? They, you know, they they are what he produces. So you've got some great characters now. We've got some great personalities, but not for me to say who's the strongest in the dressing room. Okay, um, another one from Carl. Who, which player who has left the club do you miss the most? I mean, there's so many. I mean, I remember. I mean, this is pathetic, really. When after Tony Adams' second testimonial against Celtic, I was crying in the North Bank. <laughs> well, I, taught, I had tears in my eyes. I miss, you know, I miss Tony. I miss Boldy. You know, I miss Dennis. I miss Thierry. You know, Coley. I mean, every every good player goes. Jack as well. Jack's a big mate of mine. There, there's so many. And, and really, you miss them. I miss them because... They're great people. If they were, if they were crap, if they were crap and they were idiots, yeah. you wouldn't miss them. But I'm, no. I miss, I miss all of them. You know, there's not one player that goes that I just see. You know, never going to photograph them again. So, bar two or three who I don't like, there's, you know, I miss, I miss every player who's left. Oh, okay. The Everything Arsenal podcast. What advice would you give someone looking to get into sports photography? Do you know, I get this asked a lot of times. I would say never give up because I was, I was ground down so many times when I tried to get into this job. If you want to get into football, go and photograph park football, contact your local football club, do stuff for nothing. I did stuff for nothing for years. Build up a portfolio, go to one of the big agencies in, in London, volunteer your services for free and prove yourself. If you're good enough, you'll you'll get there. It's a lot. A lot of it's about luck, but you know, never give up. And you know, if you're really serious about it, 
you know, contact me, send me some pictures. I'll critique your stuff if you want me to. But uh, ultimately, just don't give up. Whatever anyone says to you, if you want to do it, just be persistent and, and try your hardest and always try and improve. Oh, that's lovely. So if you want him to critique your stuff, send him some pictures, definitely. Okay. Chapo81, Stu, when is the best time to come down to training ground next week to get autographs with my daughter, who's mad junior gunner, soccer fan? She wants to follow your footsteps into photography. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I haven't looked at who, what days they're in. But if you come to Colney, be careful because it's a very quick road on Bell Lane. It's very dangerous and people step out cars go down there at 50 miles an hour mm. i mean honestly i would i would never take my kids down there because it's it's you know it's quite you know it's not a there's, there's no sort of dry, uh, driveway for the place to come out they're straight out of the training ground straight onto a 50 mile an hour road so it's not very safe i'd never take my kids there but uh you know maybe try and get something send something into the club to get it signed Okay, so we are going to end now. I'm going to do one more question, and I quite like this one, and we can end on this. Um, not that one, sorry, but great words. Thank you, Stu, for that. Um, from Uber, favourite photo you took this season? Oh, my word. Oh, I, I, I'm taking it on Saturday after we beat Brighton when the whole team celebrate and all the media are slagging <laughs> us off for celebrating. The 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 uh, celebration police are out in full. So yeah, we know oh. what they are. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm yet to be honest. I'm yet to take it. It will happen. It will happen. Spurs away, Chelsea oh. away. Keep the faith. We do, but you know that it's hard at the moment because of the injuries. It's just so so hard. Yeah, it will be fine. Um, Look, we've got some great players. It's not yes. you know losing to Palace, bumping the road. Bump in the road. Look at the Absolutely. team. Look at the players. No, I agree. I'm keep very excited about Saturday. Yeah, keep supporting the team. Keep supporting the team. Keep supporting the manager. And we'll get there. Right, listen. You have been absolutely incredible. Thank We've you just very spent much. nearly an hour and a half and it's gone like that. And I'd love to have you back at the end of the season and we can discuss where we end up, what it was like towards the end of the season, if you'd love to come back. Yeah, happy to, definitely. Thank you so much. No problem at all. Wow, everybody, what amazing guest. It's just been fantastic. Thank you for sending me your photos as well, Stu. They're amazing. I love them. Um, everybody, this is the Always Arsenal show. We've done nearly an hour and a half. I'm not back next week because I'm actually going to do a post-game show against Southampton, um, but I'm on Albert's channel next Wednesday night. Um, I'm just going to send you, just show you some of the messages that are coming in, okay, Stuart, because everybody's saying thank you. It's just, you are an absolute legend. It's just <laughs> been fantastic. Thank you so much. No problem at all, Amanda. Thanks for asking me. Oh, welcome. And thank you for following me on Instagram. And I was, and... Well, why wouldn't I? <laughs> You're going to unfollow me as soon as this podcast is Not over. Not at all. Don't go there. <laughs> Can't wait to see your pictures on Saturday. Can't wait when I get back in the car and look and just amazing. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. Listen, what an amazing show. Loved it. I'll see you all Saturday week post-game Southampton. But for now, it's always Arsenal. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Thank you.